Wait, what's wrong with you, man? You ain't subscribed yet? IUIC Atlanta Burning 2.0. What you waiting on? Get it done, do it now. Hey, get them clicks, get them likes, and subscribe. Do it now. They that hate you shall reign over you. The Lord is very descriptive. You understand? Watch this. Keep reading. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Ye shall do what? Flee when none pursueth you. You know what it mean to flee, bro? In the back, back there, you know what it mean to flee? It mean, say it again. To, to flee? Yeah, flee means to run. Run away scared. You know what that, you know what that mean? When the white man pull up, everybody haul ass. I done seen a, I done seen a white police officer pull up and they didn't even get out the car and, mm. and close the whole store down. Yeah. Everybody scattered like roaches. You understand? The Lord said what? And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15. Now watch this. Pay attention. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. Here go that word again. It says it shall come to pass. Because when this was written, this was written over 2,000 years ago. You understand? Go ahead. But it shall come to pass. So he's telling them this is going to happen later on in life. Go ahead. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we did not keep the commandments. Go ahead. To observe, to do all his commandments wow. and his statutes. Which I command thee this day. Wow. That all these curses. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. So the Lord said, instead of the blessing of you being on above all people, now he's going to put a curse on you. Right? Watch this. And all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. Verse 32. Listen up. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. When did that happen? When did that happen to the blacks and Hispanic men? When did that happen? Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. When were when was our sons and daughters given to another people? During slavery. You understand? You didn't learn about slavery in school? Okay, so now you're getting that lesson right yeah, now. Right. So now, all the way dating back to the 1400s, right? On up. Our ancestors were put into slavery. When we went into slavery, we had no power over our children. We would have children, and if, the, if we had a healthy child, then the white man will come, take your child, see the baby right there sitting to the side? Will take that child from you. You were shackled in chains. He would take your child and sell that child to another white man or to an Arab man. You understand? That's what we went through in slavery. So the Lord said, because we didn't want to keep the commandments, one of the curses he was going to put on us was what? Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Go ahead. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. It said, we're going to want our kids back and we cannot get them back. Why? Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine head. Because we didn't have any type of strength or bond or unity with one another at this time. They broke everything that we had uh, of knowledge of ourselves, of knowledge of who we were. You understand? They killed off all the aged men that had some type of sense. And then they enslaved the younger men and all they knew was slavery. That's why we live in the conditions that we in today. Because after slavery, did they give us any type of therapy? No. Did they give us 40 acres and a mule like they promised? No. Did they give us any type of land or any type of funding? No. They didn't give us nothing. So now we got to be reduced to what? Selling drugs to one another to get by. Right? We be stressed out. So we smoke. You smoke weed? You smoke? Everybody smoke now. Why you smoke? How old you is? 18. What about you? Y'all want to live longer lives? So why y'all smoke? See how that don't make sense? God made sand, though, God put that weed on the earth. It's in the Bible what? To smoke it? 
Oh, so hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So now, the Lord put the herbs on this earth. Guess what else is an herb? You know them little yellow flowers you wake up in the morning, your grass ain't get cut? You know, that's an herb, too. Dandelion, that's, that's an herb. You smoke that? You smoke dandelion? Oregano. Huh? Oregano. Oregano that you season your chicken with. You smoke that? So, the Lord put all those herbs on the earth to do what? To use them for what? So did he give them to you so you can get high just because you feel like getting high? No. That's why he said this. First Corinthians chapter 3. Bring it out. That's why he said this right here. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So all you young men right here, the Lord said you are his temple. The reason why the Lord got y'all standing here right now is to learn who y'all is and change. You understand? You have a purpose. Your purpose is not to wake up and kill yourself. Every time you smoke something, you're killing yourself. Why would the Lord create you just to kill yourself and die? He can't use you. How can he use you if you're polluting your body all day? The Lord said, in order for him to use you, you are his temple. He got to be able to dwell in you. Read that again. No, ye not that ye are the temple of God Go and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. The spirit of God is supposed to dwell in your minds. You understand? Listen up. Really? If any man defile the temple of God, defile means to dirty it up. So now the Lord said, your body, your mind, right? He want to dwell in you. But if you polluting it, if you're polluting it and dirtying it up, he can't use you. So guess what's going to happen if he can't use you? Go ahead. Him shall God destroy. The Lord said he will destroy you for that. How would the Lord destroy you from smoking? You know what I want. How would the Lord destroy you from smoking? Nobody know. Put you out like what? How the blunt gonna put you out? You talking about just going to sleep? Destroy you have. I got you. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Uh-huh. Also, every sickness. Every what? Every sickness. Uh -huh. And every plague. What is the sickness or plague that you could get from smoking? You don't know one? My brother here. Help these young men out. You said what? Lung cancer. That's why. And my sister going to the car. Right here with you with the red hair. Sis. Sis. My brother here, hey, what is one thing that, what's something that smoking could give you? What, what kind of sickness can smoking give you? He said lung cancer. What'd you say? Throat disease, throat cancer, what else? Heart disease, what else? All that. You get all those things from defiling your temple. So the Lord said what? Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book, of this law. So you can't read cancer or anything in the Bible. So he said every sickness and every plague that you can't find in here. Go ahead. Them will the Lord bring upon thee. The Lord said he will put those things on you. Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed. Until you die. Destroyed means being dead. You understand? So now the Lord is telling you don't put nothing in your body. Give me that wisdom of Solomon. Don't. Wisdom of Solomon 2.23? Wisdom of Solomon 2.23. So listen, understand this. The Lord is telling you, y'all got to stop all that smoking. I know it seems like it's cool. Now everybody want to turn their head. Look, everybody looking this way. No, we right here. We right here. You got to change. Because the Lord got, listen, he, there's a purpose, and I'm going to show you that. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 20. Chapter 2 and verse 23. Uh-huh. For God created man to be immortal. The Lord created you to live forever. Come on. The only way you're going to get there is if the spirit of the Lord is, going to, is able to dwell in you. He created you to be immortal. Go ahead. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. And he made you in his own image unto eternity. But if we continue to defile our temple, guess what? We're not going to make it there. You know what you want to be? Burnt. That's what you're going to get. 
The same way that that blunt be burning when you're pulling on it, that's going to be your ass. That's what the Lord tell you. Go ahead. Nevertheless, uh -huh. through envy of the devil. Through what? Through envy of the devil. Through being for doing what this man taught you to do. Guess what? Our ancestors was the ones that was picking that tobacco in the tobacco fields during slavery. So that same blunt wrap that you use to roll your weed in, that herb, the same blunt wrap you use, that same system oppressed the hell out of our people unto death. We died in those fields picking that tobacco. And now we'll turn around and go spend money for it to roll up and kill ourselves with the same damn product. Read that part again. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil uh -huh. came death. Came what? Came death. So because we want to be like this white man, because we want to do the things that he do in a way and, and move in the way that he taught us to move, guess what comes out of that? Death. You understand? Now give me give me that uh wisdom of Solomon 1 and 12. Understand this. The Lord is telling you not to be like this man. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Seek not death in the error of your life. The Lord said, no matter what it is that you're going through, the Lord calls you, you young. All y'all are young. Ain't nothing stressing y'all out too bad to the point where y'all feel like y'all got to kill yourself. You understand? Because every time you smoke a cigarette, a cigar, weed, whatever it is that you're putting in your system, guess what? Guess what? That's exactly what you're doing. You're killing yourself. You got to put it down. There's not, the Lord says, seek not death. Go ahead. And pull not upon yourselves destruction. Those diseases like we read about. He said, don't pull it on yourself. Go ahead. With the works of your hand. With your own hands. You take your own hands and roll that, that blunt up to smoke it just to die. No. You know what that's called? That means you don't love yourself. You hate yourself. He come from the heaven with thousands. No, that ain't a lot, that's a legion. 144K on the way and they plant their allegiance to cremate these heathens. Damn, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Had to pull out this flesh because I couldn't trust it. Got a spiritual body, you couldn't touch it. If you die in the test, then try your luck. That's the one up, don't run up, get done up. Load a clip full of strips, I'm a bullet. Because guess what? When you're hungry, you eat it, you feed yourself, right? Okay. Now, are you going to go into a uh, 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 trash can and eat some rotten food? No. Why? Huh? It's nasty, but what's going to happen if you eat some rotten food? You're going to get sick. You know that. That's common sense, right? So I'm not going to go and put something in my body I know that's going to destroy me. It's going to get me all sick, have me in the hospital and all that. No, it don't even smell good. It stinks. But somehow, when they like the weed, they say, ooh, it stink good. What? Bring it out. It stink because it don't belong there. Okay. You're not supposed to be uh, uh, making smoke out of it and inhaling it into your body. You understand? It stink means stay away from it. The right. same way you stay away from rotten food, stay away from the weed. Stay, I don't, I've don't. i never met a, a cigarette, cigar, weed smoker that say, I like smelling like smoke. Everybody, yo. I remember, I remember when I was younger, my uncles and all them, they used to smoke crazy, right? Smoke all crazy. But as soon as they had a little date or something, they would go change their, uh, uh, wash their butt and change their clothes because they didn't want to smell like smoke when they got out. Right. You understand? Because it stinks so bad. Don't nobody even want to be around you. You understand? So that means stay away from it. Don't bring destruction onto yourself. Give me Jeremiah 1 and 5 real quick. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Who are ready to smoke right now? Who are y'all getting ready to smoke right now? What? Grab what? Grab a drink. Say ain't nobody got no cigarettes on. Okay, read that. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Listen up. I mentioned y'all have a purpose. This is the purpose. When the Lord said he wanted to dwell in you, this is why. Read that. Before I formed thee in the belly, uh -huh. I knew thee. So before you were even born out of your mother's belly, the Lord said he knew you. Go ahead. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, uh -huh. I sanctified thee. He said, I sanctified you. I cleansed you. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet. A what? A prophet. He 
said, I created you men to be prophets. You are supposed, you were created to be a prophet unto the Lord. That's why he said, you are holy unto him, separate unto him. He chose you all. You understand? Y'all listen close. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet uh -huh. unto the nation. He said, I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. Because guess what? We all want out of this captivity. Who want the kingdom of God? Who want heaven? Nobody raised their hand. Heaven is rulership on earth. You understand? So when you see people now, right, we desire to have all the things, you know, the nice cars, the big houses, right? We don't want to have to go to work every day. That's why everybody want to be a rapper now. Everybody think that money just going to come to them, right? They want to do stuff the way you ain't got to physically go out and work in the warehouse. Don't nobody want to do that. Don't nobody want to be cutting grass for money every day. Guess what? The Lord created us to be the gods on earth, the rulers on the earth. You understand? Read that again. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. The only way we're getting out of that is if we do what God created us to do, which is to be a prophet unto the nations. We got to now repent and be the men that the Lord taught us to be. How do we do that? By keeping the commandments of God. By not smoking. You understand? Who got girlfriends in? Both of y'all. Y'all ain't even thinking about marriage. Right? Now it's just about sex. Everybody just wants some uh, some cheeks. <laughs> Everybody just wants some cheeks. What happens when a baby come out, though? First Kings 2 and 2. Or the second Kings. I was a child. Four. You got a four-year-old. You got a daughter already. I got four kids. You got four kids at 24. Okay. Okay. So now, you still with the mother? Been with her for nine years. You been with the mom for nine years. You married her? Wow. Ain't been thinking about it. Huh? Ain't been thinking about that. Wow. Okay. So you don't see the importance in that. Your parents married? Yeah. Okay. Do that. You work? No. Wow. That again? Yeah, with this shit. Now, do that make sense? Ah, uh, but I ain't saying I ain't drunk, though. So, so, all right, so you're selling drugs then? Huh? Bring it out. Bro, listen, understand this. There's only one thing that's going to come out of that lifestyle. You know what that is? What? Jail. Yeah. Or what? Yeah. That's it. You got four kids that you should be thinking about, but instead you're willing to risk your life because you just want to chill? No, that's not what a man does. Give me that if a man don't work. That's not that's not what a man does. A man, go, guess what? I was young like you when I had kids. I had my first two kids by the time I was 21. You understand? But guess what I kept? And I, was, I did the same thing. I was selling drugs and all that when I was younger. But at the end of, you know what I had to do? I had to make a decision. It's either I'm going to continue to do this and either dead or in jail or I'm going to straighten up. And take care of my damn sons and my and my and my wife. You understand? Read that. Second Thessalonians chapter three and verse ten. Uh -huh. But even when we were with you, uh -huh. this we commanded you uh -huh. that if any would not work, if a man do not work, go ahead. Neither should he eat. How can you possibly provide? Now give me the other one. Infidel. Infidel. How could you possibly take care of your your family? Listen. If you were to die right now, Lord forbid, right? Because that's the only thing that come out of that lifestyle. Dead or in jail. So let's say the Lord decided to kill you. Because that's who's going to judge you. It's the Lord that's going to do it to you. So let's say the most High decided to say, you know what? I'm going to kill you. What's your name again? Hector? Hector? Boom, you dead. I'm, I'm done with Hector. He ain't going to change. Now what about your kids? You got life insurance out of, out of drug dealing? Huh? I don't need no life insurance after drug deal. You said what? Oh, you don't get no life insurance after drug deal. You don't get. You're right. You don't get no life insurance out of that. So why do it? Why do it? You sell drugs too? You too? Y'all just buy it, smoke. Huh? My man. Talking to you, Hector. So why do it? Watch this. Read that. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. 
But if any provide not for his own. So now, you put yourself in a position. Let's say you get locked up now, right? Are you able to provide from jail? Yeah. Say it again? No. No. I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience. No. Nah, you probably ain't gonna be able to do what you want to do, and yeah. what you're gonna be able to say is you're gonna Hector. be able to make something happen. You've been taught lies. I'm, I'm telling you what's going on. My dad locked up right now, still providing for all his eight, eight of his kids out here. Okay. Sending everybody down there. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you. I know for a fact you can provide for them in there. I can't. Say one thing. So, with that, with that being said, with that being said, that's the life that you want for your children. Why so why you made that you, point? I'm just saying why you think I'm still out here in this group. I ain't, I ain't choosing that But problem. Hector, you made, you brought that out like you made a valid point. That's, I feel sorry for you that you, your father is in prison. Chick, chick. I don't want the same thing for you though. Chick, chick. But you have a sense of pride chick. on you for some reason. For some reason, you don't want to get a real job for your family. You rather every day risk your life. Every day risk your life. And then, as you know, make the same decisions that probably your father did and have your kids go the same route that you go through. Walking around, have nothing to do. I'm chilling. Oh, where my father at? He in jail. He in prison. What's going on? I'm out here selling drugs like my father used to do. A same generational. Your mom went you home too, don't you? Don't you? Your dad home, right? Same thing with your woman, right? But you're doing the same thing. When it's going to stop? Give me Hosea 4. Let's go there. When it's going to stop, Hector? It starts with you. That's why we out here. We're not here just to give or laugh or nothing like that. We bring these things out because we've been there. We Check have you. fathers. We know what's going on out here. We're trying to change it. We're trying to stop it. But our young men don't understand that. They don't see it. Read. Hosea chapter Read. 4 Read. and verse 6. Uh -huh. My people are destroyed. My people Hector is destroyed. Mentally, he's destroyed. My man, what's your name? Peanut. Peanut. You destroyed. I'm telling you now. You destroyed mentally. Spiritually as well. Why? Because you come through here, through the ghetto, every day, acting like this is how you're supposed to live. You think you good. You think you chill. You think you got everything made. You got money at the end of the week. You living by. You just living by. You better scrapping for your kids. They know who their father is, but you're not there all the time. You think this is how it's supposed to be? No, you're destroyed. You're destroyed. Peanut, you're destroyed. Read. My people are destroyed uh -huh. for lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So God says, you're destroyed because y'all lack knowledge. He just went over knowledge with you. One of the knowledge is that if you don't if you don't provide for your household, you're considered an infidel. You know what an infidel is? It's someone who do not believe in God. You spit at his grave. Mm. Oh, the, the, he died for our sins, right? You spit at that. You don't believe in him. He gave you a chance to get yourself right, but you don't take that chance. Hector, you are a son of God. A son of God don't live the way you live right now. Is she, does she accept you at the house? Or did you get kicked out? Do you live there every night? You stay there with her. And you pay the bills. But you do not want to marry her. Why? Nine years now. Hold on. She done cheated on me and had enough baby on me that one. Oh, okay. If she done did that once, she'll do it again. Okay. Which is, you're right. You're right. That way ain't taking So why, okay, but why would you continue to stay with them? You got my kid. That don't mean nothing. Okay. So we'll do this. All right, let me show you something. Let me show you what a son of God is, right? Let me show you something. We're going to finish this scripture. I'm going to show you what a son of God is. I'm going to show you how the son of God move. All right? We don't move like niggas no more. Okay? You're not a nigger. You're not a spick. Nothing like that. You're not a nigger. You're not a spicker either. All right? You are God. I'm going to show you how to move like God. All right? Let's finish this out. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Y'all reject uh, knowledge. Read. I will also reject thee. Uh-huh. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. So, because y'all forgotten God's laws, for instance, not smoking weed. Guys don't smoke weed. That's what guys don't do. We don't smoke weed. Well, y'all forgot God's knowledge. So now, the Savior's here. We teaching y'all so y'all can teach y'all to. Okay? 
You understand that? So we understand we got to keep God's laws. We will reverse all this trauma, all this drama that's going on in Pendleton homes. Y'all understand that, right? Okay, so go to Matthew 19. You're not married, but I'm going to show you something, okay? First, go to Sirach 6. Go to Sirach 6. Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. Hector, listen to this. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. If you want to get a friend, prove him first. You understand what I mean? Well, that's, if somebody say, if you want to get a friend, prove him first. How, what it means to prove somebody? Nah, nah, not prove like trying to prove like a, a evidence or something like that. Prove like, for instance, you got a girlfriend, right? God is against boyfriend and girlfriend. God is against that. He loves marriage, but he against boyfriend and girlfriend. So what he teaches us is when you're trying to get into that process of being with someone for the rest of your life, you got to prove them. Try them out. What they into, what they like. What kind of spirit do they have? Are they matched with your spirit? Can you tolerate them? You know what I'm saying? Can you tolerate with your girlfriend? Oh, she would tolerate with her even though she cheated? You could tolerate with somebody who cheated on you? Not really, but you can't tolerate with nobody that cheated on you, Hector. Huh? How you Oh, so you, you did it. Yo, you go back on her. You did the same thing, so that is how even out. Hector, that's not justifying nothing. That's not how the guy move. You don't do that just to get back at him. You know what it sound like? That sound like kids. That sound like what kids do. What? So no? What? Y'all love bond now? Y'all stronger now because of that happened? Hell no. It don't make sense, does it? So hold on, but this is what I'm trying to let you know. You got your. They, she's done proved to you that she's not going to be loyal to you. So why waste your time? You wasting your time. You wasting her time. You showing that. She, you don't show it up to her that you're not going to be loyal to her. Why she wasting her time with you? That's why God said there should be no sex amongst y'all unless y'all married. You know why? Because sex build, build that, that, that spiritual bond that shouldn't be there. It's just sexual lust. That's all it is. That's why you keep on going back to her. There's a sexual bond, but there's no real spiritual bond with her. You took her for lust. Not for who she is. Read it again. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. Uh -huh. If thou would get a friend, prove him first. Prove him first, read. And be not hasty to credit him. And do not be hasty to credit him. You've been with her for nine years. That's too long. For what? Until you, until you have, what it is, is you have insecure issues now because you don't trust her. While you can be with a wife that you can't trust, Hector, and have a real job and take care of the family. Well, what you're doing out here is when you when you say that you're continuing the, the, the destruction of our people, when you sell drugs to our people, you continue the destruction of our people. When you don't take care of your family household, you're destroying your community. You understand that, people? Have y'all had any family members of your own that were destroyed by drugs? Cigarettes and cancer, right? You have to destroy about it, and you're doing the same thing. Hey. The same thing. Because of lust of money. Read. So, Rob, chapter 33 and verse 20. Uh -huh. As long as thou livest and have birth in thee, give not thyself over to any. For it is better that thy children should seek to thee than that thou should, should stand to their courtesy. All right. So, God says, your lifetime should be dedicated to God. We dedicated to God. Why are we out here? We're teaching the word to y'all. We're trying to get y'all the word. We're trying to get y'all to understand. We want you to repent. That's what we're trying to get y'all to do. Repent. So God said, with that being said, and during, you, during this process, especially with you, yes, your daughter, I mean, your, your wife, your girlfriend, I keep thinking of my wife, your girlfriend, she's not loyal to you. But you said that you're still with her because of the kids. You can still take care of the kids and not be in the same house with you. You understand that, right? You lay with her. That's your fault. You, you can take the kids or she stay with her. You know what I'm saying? But God is against boyfriend and girlfriend. That's a choice you need to make. But right now, you're going to cause confusion amongst the kids. They're going to see that y'all don't link together. Y'all don't get along. They're going to see that. Dang, why daddy always going from the house? He never home. Why? Because he don't want to be around him. 
They're going to see that. And guess what? They're going to uh, carry the same traits that you had and not have a functional family household.